Hello everyone! The Komodo dragon, or Varanus komodoensis, is the largest lizard species in the world, native to the islands of Indonesia, including Komodo, Rinka, Flores, and Gili Motang. They can grow up to 3 meters long and weigh around 70 kilograms. With their powerful bodies, Komodo dragons are notable for their light gray skin, thick scales, and distinct features, such as a large head and strong legs. Are you ready to join us? If so, leave a 4 in the comments below. The Komodo dragon is a carnivorous predator, primarily hunting large animals such as deer, wild pigs, and even other members of its own species. They utilize sophisticated hunting skills, including stealth and quick bursts of speed during critical moments. Additionally, Komodo dragons have a unique digestive system that allows them to consume large amounts of food in a single meal, sometimes up to 80% of their body weight. Moreover, managing giant reptiles like the Komodo dragon is crucial for protecting ecological balance in the ecosystems they inhabit. As apex predators, Komodo dragons play an essential role in controlling the populations of other species, such as deer and wild pigs. Without their presence, these species could proliferate excessively, leading to intense competition for food and living space ultimately disrupting the ecological balance. Managing the Komodo dragon population is not only vital for ecological balance, but also essential for minimizing conflicts with humans. When the number of Komodo dragons exceeds sustainable levels, they may invade residential areas, posing dangers to people and livestock. Attacks by Komodo dragons can result in harm to human health and property, increasing fear and anxiety within the community. The, female. the use of firearms to manage the Komodo dragon population has been implemented in certain areas where numbers have exceeded sustainable levels, ensuring the sustainability of both the species and the ecosystem. As the Komodo dragon population grows, they can put pressure on food sources and habitats, as well as pose threats to humans and livestock. In such cases, Culling some individuals is necessary to minimize the risk of conflict and maintain natural balance. Do you agree with this method? If so, please like this video. If not, leave a 5 in the comments to share your thoughts.
This program is typically carried out by wildlife management agencies, with close supervision to ensure that the activities are conducted responsibly and effectively. The goal is not only to reduce the population, but also to protect the health of the population, prevent depletion of food sources, and safeguard their natural habitats. This approach not only helps Komodo dragons maintain sustainable growth, but also protects the communities and ecosystems in which they reside. Through careful management, we can achieve a balance that benefits both the species and the surrounding environment. Once the Komodo dragon has been spotted and is in sight, identifying its weak points is crucial for making quick and effective shots. These weak points typically include the head, neck, and other sensitive areas, where an accurate shot can significantly impact its ability to move and survive. Thorough preparation and an understanding of Komodo dragon behavior will help hunters make informed decisions, ensuring that the process is conducted responsibly and with respect for the life of this magnificent reptile. Such an approach emphasizes ethical hunting practices while contributing to effective population management. The lesson learned from using hunting as a method to manage Komodo dragons is the necessity to carefully balance the protection of property with the responsibility of conserving this species. While hunting can be seen as a population control method in urgent situations, it also carries the risk of disrupting the ecological balance and reducing the species numbers. We must recognize that the existence of Komodo dragons is not only important for nature, but also holds great value for local culture and tourism. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more updates. They are also a complete predator. We call a complete predator. Today we're going to explore the amazing landscapes where monitor lizards thrive. Monitor lizards, large and powerful reptiles, are commonly found in dense forests, grasslands, and even near riverbanks. These environments not only provide a rich food source for monitor lizards, but also create ideal habitats for them to live and grow. Are you ready to join us? If so, leave a zero in the comments below. Monitor lizards primarily inhabit tropical and subtropical regions, often found in rainforests, savannas, and wetland areas. They prefer humid environments with plenty of vegetation, where they can easily find food and shelter. Monitor lizards are also commonly found near water sources such as rivers, lakes, 
or swamps, which help them maintain moisture and provide favorable conditions for hunting. This diversity in their habitats has allowed monitor lizards to become one of the most widespread and thriving reptile species in the wild. Additionally, it's noteworthy that the population of monitor lizards has been increasing rapidly in recent years. This surge can be attributed to several factors, including conservation efforts for their natural habitats and reduced pressure from hunting. The adaptability of monitor lizards to various environments, combined with their high reproductive rates, has allowed them to recover and expand their populations. However, this increase also presents new challenges, such as conflicts with humans as monitor lizards venture closer to residential areas in search of food. The monitor lizard, a reptile, known for its adaptability, often chooses residential areas to search for abundant food sources. In these environments, they can easily find fallen fruits, insects, and even leftover food from humans. Gardens with fruit trees, shrubs, and moist areas are ideal spots for monitor lizards. They typically navigate through fences and vegetation to access these food sources, while also providing opportunities for breeding and shelter. In recent years, some conservation and wildlife management organizations have been established with the goal of reducing the population of monitor lizards in residential areas. The use of humane traps is carried out to capture these lizards without harming them. Once caught, experts assess their health and decide whether to release them back into the wild or relocate them to safer areas. Through this approach, they hope not only to reduce the number of monitor lizards, but also to create a balance between humans and nature. Do you agree with this method? If you do, please like this video. If not, leave a 1 in the comments to share your opinion. In addition to using traps, some areas also allow the use of air rifles to hunt monitor lizards in residential areas to control their population. This method is typically applied in situations where monitor lizards pose a threat to crops or human safety. Air rifles, known for their high accuracy and low noise levels, are considered an effective solution to mitigate the impact of monitor lizards without causing panic among residents. When spotting a monitor lizard and needing to shoot to control the situation, it's crucial to follow safety and accuracy steps. First, observe carefully to clearly identify the lizard's location and behavior, ensuring that no people or animals are in the area that could be at risk. Choose an appropriate weapon, such as a small caliber rifle or a high accuracy air gun, and ensure you have a stable and clear aim. Oh! 
The lesson learned from using hunting as a management strategy is the necessity of carefully weighing the need to protect assets against the responsibility of conserving wildlife. Hunting, when conducted in a controlled manner, can be an effective method for managing animal populations, especially in situations where other measures may not be feasible. However, hunting also reminds us of the long-term impacts it can have on ecosystems. The delicate balance of biodiversity can be disrupted without proper planning and management processes. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more updates. Turkeys originated in North America, where they were domesticated by indigenous civilizations such as the Maya and Aztecs. Initially, wild turkeys lived in forests and grasslands, and they were raised for food and cultural ceremonies. In the 16th century, when Europeans explored the Americas, turkeys were brought back to Europe and gradually became part of the cuisine in many countries, especially during festive occasions like Thanksgiving in the United States. Are you ready to join us? If so, leave a 2 in the comments below. <laughs> Turkeys typically live in flocks, displaying high social behavior as they move together in search of food, such as seeds, fruits, and insects. They are very alert and capable of detecting danger from a distance. When they feel threatened, turkeys often fly up into trees or seek shelter. At night, they usually sleep in the branches to avoid predators. This behavior helps protect them from hunters like foxes and birds of prey. Turkeys, with their remarkable adaptability, have thrived in environments devoid of natural predators. In regions like North America, where they have been domesticated and no longer face threats from hunters, they have better opportunities for growth and reproduction. The absence of predators, such as wolves or eagles, allows turkey populations to increase rapidly. In this safe environment, turkeys can forage more easily, grow healthier, and reproduce more abundantly. This leads to a population explosion, resulting in large flocks of turkeys. This population increase not only aids their survival, but also opens up opportunities for farming and raising turkeys, making them a popular food source. These favorable conditions have significantly contributed to the strong development of turkeys, establishing them as an important part of modern agriculture. However, in some areas, Regulated turkey hunting is allowed to manage their population effectively. Hunting can help maintain ecological balance and prevent overcrowding, thereby protecting the habitats of other wildlife. When a turkey populations exceed permissible levels, they can put pressure on food sources and habitats, leading to negative impacts. Through carefully managed hunting programs, local authorities can adjust turkey numbers, ensuring that they not only thrive, but also coexist harmoniously within the ecosystem. Do you agree with this approach? If so, 
please like this video. If not, leave a 3 in the comments to share your thoughts. When hunting turkeys, maintaining a safe distance is extremely important. This distance not only ensures the safety of the hunter, but also prevents the turkeys from feeling excessively threatened. If turkeys sense close presence, they can become panicked and flee. Additionally, keeping a safe distance allows hunters to observe and assess the situation more effectively, leading to more accurate decisions. Respecting this distance not only ensures a successful hunting experience, but also protects the turkey's habitat, helping to maintain balance within the ecosystem. When spotting a turkey, it's crucial to quickly reposition yourself to avoid startling them or causing them to flee. Once you have a clear line of sight, the hunter should aim for the turkey's weak points, typically the head or neck, where a shot will be most effective. Focus and patience are key. It's important not to rush and to wait for the right moment to take a quick and accurate shot. This approach not only ensures success in the hunt, but also demonstrates respect for the prey helping to minimize suffering for the turkey. The lesson learned from managing turkey populations and hunting activities is the necessity of maintaining a balanced and sustainable ecosystem. Regulating turkey populations through controlled hunting programs not only helps prevent overcrowding, but also protects the habitats of other species. By implementing reasonable regulations and scientific methods, we can ensure that turkeys continue to thrive while maintaining biodiversity. Ultimately, respect for nature and active participation in managing natural resources will contribute to a sustainable future for both humans and animals. Thank you for watching the video. Please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for the latest videos. See you in the next ones. Large feral hogs in the United States are not only famous for their impressive size, but also for their distinctive movement habits, creating a unique natural scene of activity in their habitat. A herd of wild boars usually consists of from a few to dozens of animals, moving together to optimize protection and defense against predators, while also practicing effective foraging skills. This behavior becomes especially prominent in situations where predation risk is increased. The boar herd's pegs display incredible agility and speed, and their fluidity of movement allows them to reach speeds of up to 25 mph, facilitating their escape potential threat. In particular, their excellent swimming ability 
also plays an important role in the overall mobility of the herd. The ability to root effectively is an important tool that wild boars use to exercise and use their teeth and hooves. They are capable of digging and extracting food sources from the environment, showing ingenuity in obtaining nutrients from a distance. These unique characteristics not only help them survive, but also help them thrive in their natural environment. The combination of agile mobility and adaptability in their diet are important factors that mark wild boar's success in adapting to different habitats. The problem is that nighttime is when wild boars are most active, so checking traps in the evening is important to harvest wild pigs as soon as possible. The link between smartly designed trap strategies and effectiveness in catching feral pigs is important. And game-changing traps are truly an important step toward reshaping the way we face challenges. Control Wild Pig Herds Once the trap area is clear of wild pigs, quickly moving the trap to another area is important to maintain performance. Traps will be partially disassembled and parts moved to new areas to increase success rates. Choosing the right location is an important decision to ensure trap effectiveness. A unique strategy is to steal traps just before dark, expecting that a trap in that area will catch a herd of wild pigs. Waiting patiently overnight can yield surprising and impressive results. The innovation in trap design is the use of a trap with four main doors. When activated, the doors will collapse, creating a large space for harvesting wild boar. This is a newly designed synthetic trap that emphasizes innovation in the separation and harvesting of feral pigs. However, while this is a significant improvement, it poses challenges in terms of cost and deployment across a variety of terrains. We will update you with information as soon as possible. Developing and testing new technology in trapping is important to maintain transparency and assist the hunting community in understanding the advantages and limitations of these innovations. Setting traps near food sources to catch wild animals is not only an effective strategy, but also a skillful combination of knowledge about survival habits and creativity in the art of hunting. This is based on a deep understanding of the nutritional habits of wild boar, an intelligent and sophisticated omnivore. Wild boars often have the habit of hunting at night 
and looking for food from many different sources, including plant foods, fruits, vegetables, grains, and small animals, such as mice and frogs. This is their preferred choices. Placing traps near these food sources helps facilitate the attraction of wild boars, causing them to accidentally trigger the traps. This requires a deep understanding of the natural cuisine that wild boars prefer. Setting traps out of sight of wild boars is an important step to increase your chances of catching them, as they often have a habit of protecting themselves and hiding when eating. Using the right bait is considered an art, especially when choosing food that wild boars prefer. Placing traps at the right height to avoid situations where they can jump over the trap is also an important technical aspect. There are many types of traps used to capture feral pigs near food sources, including spike traps, bait traps, and snap traps. Quick trap, although simple, is effective with its quick catch mechanism. When a spiked boar trap is activated, there is a potential for injury due to its structure, which is often placed on trails frequented by wild boars. Bait traps, on the other hand, use food in combination with a toxic substance to create an independent effect. However, it is equally important to ensure the safety of those in the pit, not to place traps in locations that pose a risk to people or pets and to comply with all local regulations regarding the use of wild pig traps. This is not only an important step, but also an important part of being humane in the hunting process. The handling of occupied wild forests plays a decisive role in the overall success of the hunt. We need to remember that respect for nature and animals is key to maintaining balance and harmony in the environment. <laughs>